till now we have seen BJT under equilibrium where all three terminals are connected together or all of them are grounded. In that case energy band diagram looks like this and the depletion weights are logically shown on this BJT. In this video we will see if we apply bias to these junctions how does BJT function. For a PN junction we can either forward bias it or reverse bias it. As we have two junctions in BJT, we can have four combinations. Here FB represents forward bias and RB represents reverse bias. When both the junctions are forward biased, we call BJT is in saturation mode. When emitter junction is forward biased and collector junction is reverse biased, we call this forward active. In short, we call this active mode as well. When emitter junction is reverse biased and collector junction is forward biased, we call this reverse active or also called as inverse active. And when both the junctions are reverse biased, we call this cutoff. So to summarize, we have four modes of operation depending on how we bias these two junctions, emitter junction and collector junction. And out of all these modes, forward active mode is of great importance for us because it makes signal amplification possible. So in this video we will see BJT under forward active mode or simply BJT under active mode. So let us apply forward bias to this emitter junction by applying higher potential to P type emitter and lower potential to N type base. Because of the applied forward bias across the emitter junction, the electric field in the depletion region would decrease and the built-in potential would also decrease. As a result, the depletion width would also decrease. And now let's reverse bias the collector junction by applying lower potential to P-type collector compared to N-type base. When we reverse bias the collector junction, the electric field in the depletion region would increase and the potential would also increase. And as a result, depletion width would increase. The difference between these two Fermi energy levels would be Q times VEB where we know VEB is a positive value. And the difference between these two energy levels, the Fermi energy level at collector side and Fermi energy level at base side would be equal to minus Q times VCB. As VCB itself would be negative, so negative of negative positive. As emitter junction is forward biased, the lot of holes present in P plus emitter would get injected across the junction onto the base. How many ever holes are injected across the emitter junction from emitter to base per unit time should be supplied by the source but there is no concept of hole in the metals which connect this transistor to this supply. So we should be talking about how many electrons are taken by the supply to create these holes which would be injected across the junction. And at the same time, majority carriers electrons in base would get injected onto the emitter. And as these electrons diffuse through the emitter, they get recombined with the majority carriers holes in the emitter. How many of our holes are recombining with these electrons should be supplied by the supply again. So the supply should be supplying the number of holes which are required to recombine with this injected electrons from base to emitter. So this would contribute to the emitter current which is supplying the number of holes required to be injected across the emitter junction and the number of holes required to recombine with the electrons which are injected from base to emitter. The holes injected from emitter to base as they diffuse through the base they get recombined with the electrons present in the base and under the assumption that base width is very small compared to the diffusion length of holes then the recombinations would be small as a result there will be a lot of holes still present which would get pulled by the electric field which is in the junction directed from base to collector. So these remaining holes after the recombination would get pulled by this electric field into the collector. How many of our holes are coming into collector per unit time should be taken away by the supply connected between collector and base. As the collector junction is reverse biased, there would be minority carriers electrons in collector which would get pulled by this electric field onto the base side. And similarly, the minority carriers in base holes would get pulled 
onto the collector. And these two components are actually called the leakage current that we have seen before, I0. Now the number of electrons supplied into the collector by the supply would be equal to the leakage current that flows. And at the base side, the number of electrons to be supplied should be equal to the number of electrons required to be injected across the emitter junction from base to emitter plus the number of electrons required to recombine with the holes which are injected from emitter to base minus the number of electrons required for the leakage current to flow. Looking at all the current components, we can say this component would be equal to this component and this component would be equal to this component and this component would be equal to this one plus this one. So overall, we can say the number of electrons flowing into the device would be equal to number of electrons flowing out of the device per unit time and vice versa. And we can talk about the currents flowing which are opposite in the direction of electron flow. The amount of current flowing into the device would be equal to the amount of current flowing out of the device and vice versa. To understand these current components in BJT in a simpler way, let me draw some lines in this structure. The amount of holes injected from emitter into base, let's say is represented with this. This width represents, let's say, the current that is flowing, I, E, P, because this is the whole current and this current is emitter current. So we'll call this I, E, P, emitter's whole current. And out of the number of holes flowing per unit time, part of them would actually get recombined in the base. So I am taking off some of the magnitude here and rest of them would just flow into the collector. So this component, we're going to call it as I, C, P. It's the collector hole current. This current resulting because of the recombination, let me call this IBB, as emitter junction is forward biased, the base injects its majority carriers electrons into the emitter. And let me represent that in terms of current, which would be in opposite direction to that of the electron flow. So current would be in this direction. And we're going to call this as IEN. Now IBB, how many number of holes are recombining? Those many number of electrons should be supplied by the source. So I'm representing equivalent component of IBB in terms of electron flow. And because the collector junction is reverse biased, there would be a current component, which is the leakage current, which would flow in this direction. This we are going to call it as I naught, but in this case, as this is going to be part of the collector current, we'll call this simply as IC naught. Now let me represent the current components flowing outside. This current which would be flowing is equal to IE, emitter current. Current coming out of collector would be IC and current coming out of base is IB. We know that the total amount of current flowing into the device should be equal to total amount of current flowing out of the device. So we can say IE should be equal to IB plus IC. Now let me write the components of IE and IC. The emitter current IE can be written as IEP plus IEN, where this is the emitter hole current and this is emitter's electron current. And collector current can be written as IC is equal to ICP plus IC naught. From this equation, we can write the base current IB as IE minus IC, which can be written as IEN plus IEP minus ICP minus IC naught. We can segregate this into three components. One, IEN, second, IEP minus ICP, and third one, IC naught. And we can say this IEN is because of the number of electrons injected from base into the emitter across the emitter junction. And that was this component that we have seen. The second component, which is IEP minus ICP, which would be this IBB quantity, which would be equal to the number of electrons supplied into base to recombine with the injected holes from the emitter into base, which is this component we have talked about. And IC naught is basically the reverse saturation current that is flowing through the reverse biased collector junction. And in fact, we said it is because of the minority electrons in P collector flowing across the collector junction into base and 
the minority holes are flowing from n type base to p type collector in fact we have talked about this huge component that is flowing because of the injected holes from emitter into base and the remaining ones after recombination in the base flowing through this junction into p type collector so when we account for this component talking about this component would be meaningless that's why in most of the literature we wouldn't talk about this whole current contribution to the leakage current and in general that's why we call this ic not as icn as well so that we can write ic is equal to icp plus icn as we can say ic not can be written as icn we can say ib has three component first component being the number of electrons injected across the emitter junction from base to emitter and second component the amount of electrons required to recombine with the holes injected by emitter into base and third component is the number of electrons flowing into base to account for the reverse saturation current flowing because the collector junction is reverse biased and this ic not is actually represented here this component of base current and if you observe the amount of current flowing as part of the collector current is majorly icp because ic not is a very negligible term compared to icp in active mode and the amount of current flowing as collector current is in fact not in control of this supply that we have connected between collector and base and this current that is flowing icp is in fact is in control of the supply that we have connected between emitter and base and it doesn't directly depend on ie instead it is on iep so to represent the relationship between these we're going to define certain terms the first important one being gamma star we would call this as emitter injection efficiency which is given by iep over the emitter current so we can write this as iep over iep plus ien so this basically tells how much fraction of the total emitter current is actually injected by the emitter into base because iep is the one directly impacts how much is the icp it's not ien so to distinguish that we are talking about iep in general in terms of ie and the next important term that we're going to define is base transportation factor alpha t which is given by icp over iep this fraction alpha t talks about how much fraction of the emitter injected current iep is actually transported across the base into collector in other words we can say alpha t measures the loss of carriers to recombination in the base region we're going to define another term called alpha not which we would call the dc current gain in common base configuration we'll talk about the common base common emitter and common collector configurations later in the videos so for now let's just take alpha not is the dc current gain in common base configuration which is given by icp over ie alpha not can be written in terms of gamma star and alpha t as like this gamma star times alpha t now we can write the collector current is equal to we know ic is icp plus ic not icp can be written as alpha not times ie plus ic not in fact we can write ic not as ic b not representing that it is the current that is flowing between collector and base when emitter is open which means if we keep emitter open ie would be zero when ie is zero all these components icp ibb and all would be zero and the only current that would be flowing between collector and base terminals would be icb and we are signifying this by representing o here telling that emitter is open so we call this icb not all important relationships that we have discussed are represented here the circuit symbol for this pnp transistor would be like this two terminals this one representing emitter this one representing collector and we would have a third terminal representing the base and to distinguish a pnp transistor from a npn transistor when this bjt is in active mode we know that emitter base junction is forward biased so that emitter current actually flows 
into the device. So to represent that, we have an arrow mark. So the arrow mark tells when this emitter base junction is followed by us, how does the current flow? So if it is inwards into the device, it is a PNP transistor. Whereas for a NPN transistor, the circuit symbol would look like this, where the arrow mark is outwards. In NPN transistor, emitter would be n-type and base would be p-type. So in order to forward bias emitter-base junction, we should be applying a lower potential to emitter compared to base. In that case, current would be flowing in this direction. Before we close this topic, one last important point that in order to have a better control on collector current, we need to have a gamma star as high as possible and alpha t as high as possible so that we would have alpha a high value. As a result, based on IE, we can control IC. And we know gamma star is basically a fraction, which means it will be always less than one. But in order to have a high value close to one, IE p should be very, very greater than IE n. Only then this gamma star would be close to one. And that's the reason why the emitter is heavily doped compared to base, so that we can have IEP far greater than IEN. And similarly, to have alpha not higher, we need to have alpha T higher. ICP should be close to IEP. And the reason why ICP is not equal to IEP is because there is recombination happening in the base. And to reduce the amount of recombination happening in the base, we should be reducing the width of base. And that's why we have been showing the width of base small since we started discussing BJT. So if you observe, gamma star and alpha t would always be less than 1. As a result, even alpha naught, the DC current gain in common base configuration would always be less than 1. 